He runs and owns, I would hope, because it's named after him, the Matt Walbeck Baseball Academy. Guys, give it up for our good friend, Matt Walbeck. Thank you, Matt. Right. Thank you, Dave. Have a, have a seat. That was fun. Maybe we'll sit like this. Does that work? I think so. I think we're good. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming out here on what is turning out to be an absolutely beautiful afternoon. I want to start with you. When did you first have an idea you were good enough to be a major league ball player? Well, when I was five, I told my dad I wanted to be a major league baseball player. And without hesitation, he said, well, we better start practicing. <laughs> so yeah. he gave me the hope. And, um, you know, we worked a lot practiced and it's, uh, it was, it's been a great ride. When you were... In, when did you start actually getting some attention? Was it high school? Was it before that? When did you start getting real serious about getting on that track? So when I was a junior, uh, I started to get noticed by scouts and college recruiters. They actually came out to watch a, another teammate of mine, Wayne Weinheimer. And um, I was fortunate enough to catch some attention there. And, you know, my freshman and sophomore year, I actually didn't catch. Uh, they said I was too short and uh, didn't, wasn't strong enough, but uh, started working out, and one thing led to another, and I got drafted out of high school in 87 and went on to play for 17 years. Was it ever a, a question for you, do I go right into the system or do I go to college? Was that ever an issue with you, with your parents? Uh, well, my mom was a school teacher, ah. so you know I was certainly yeah. uh, feeling that pressure, but uh, my passion and joy for the game and having the opportunity to go on and potentially play Major League Baseball was something I, I figured was the time to take that chance. And I'll remind everybody, too, you can see the cameras in front of us. We'll be popping these up on social and on khtk.com. So hello to all of you out there. Now, Matt, what would you say? I'm sure you've gotten this question many times, but do you have a standout memory from your career, a oh, standout memory, or do you have quite a few you can't pick from? Well, quite a few, but I would say that the number one, my, my career highlight would be catching Scott Erickson's no-hitter oh, with, wow. with the Twins in 94. And, um, you know, that was something that I would consider my career highlight for sure. This is random because about a month and a half ago, I saw Scott Erickson. I was at a golf tournament in L.A., which apparently he makes the rounds. Scott has a good time. He's a fun dude. And, and I ended up talking to him. for I didn't realize it was Scott. And I remember those years, especially with the Orioles and Twins, where he was just killing it. And we ended up talking for a good hour. He's a heck of a guy. Great guy, yeah. And just uh, super personable and unbelievable sinker and slider, too. I mean, uh, it was a lot of fun to catch. So when you catch a no-hitter, I've always wondered this because I remember hearing – Mickey Mantle re, uh, relay, uh, gosh, whose story was it? It was, uh, who was the catcher for his Yankees? Yogi. Yogi, thank you. God, I was having a brain freeze there. So apparently Don Larson, from what Mickey Mantle said, was a little hungover the day he threw <laughs> his no-no. And Yogi catches it, runs out, and neither of them could figure out who, who would jump first into each other's arms. So, so Yogi ends up jumping and kneeing Don in a real strategic place. <laughs> and, and that was what Don brought from that celebration. So when you're running out to the mound, do you, do you jump into Scott's arms? Does Scott jump into your arms? Do you just go with it? Yeah, actually kind of embarrassing. Um, I ran out, and I was getting ready to hug him, and he turned to his left and gave Kent Herbeck a big <laughs> hug, so I was kind of left there hanging. And it was a big picture to prove it, too. So, But, uh, yeah, I'm like, hey, where's the love? You know? right. So you're just jumping on the pile? <laughs> I just kind of, after that, I'm like, high five, all right. Obviously, the pitcher's going to get all the credit for that. But how much of that, and, and I know you're going to be humble here, but how much of that is, would you say, is a catcher participation? And how much of it is, I... I were you calling the ball, calling the pitches? Was the manager calling them in? How did that work? Well, yeah, in pro baseball, the catcher always calls the pitches. The pitcher has the opportunity to shake off. So sure. he shook off quite a bit. But, you know, Greg Vaughn made the last out of that, actually. Wow. He flew out to left. We yeah, will remind so, him of yeah. that here in a couple hours when he's yeah. on the stage with Derek Lee. It always comes down to the best hitter, you know. And <laughs> we got fortunate on right? that one. So then you go through your career. And there's so few people that can actually say they played Major League Baseball, much less played for a number of teams like yourself. And I, I don't want to move on to what you're doing now before I ask you, Chicago Cubs. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to be at Wrigley Field for about an hour. I was driving through. I went in. It was opening day. Ernie Banks saying, take me out to the ball game. And it was 
like the most spiritual baseball experience I've ever had in my life as a lifelong Giants fan. So when you step on that field, how long did it take you to get over the fact that you're basically in, in one of three spots, Yankee Stadium, Fenway, and Wrigley is baseball mecca? Yeah, that was an unbelievable experience. I mean, my legs were literally shaking my first at bat. Uh, Harry Carey called my first hit, my wow. first home run. and. Uh, the ivy wasn't quite on the walls yet, and it was cold, but the fans there are incredible. And, and as you know, it's like a cathedral for baseball and just an incredible experience to be a part of that. I'm not making an old joke here, but it's right around that time. You were you came in just after they started doing night games? That's right. Yep, just I after. came in just after. Right. Yep, 93. I remember that. I remember that game. I think they played the Reds, and they had the big button mm -hmm. out on the field. And we were all yeah. thinking that it was the end of the world that they were going to have <laughs> night games at Wrigley Field. Turned that wasn't an easy right. thing for a while. Yeah, and then they had the All-Star game the year after that. And yep. so, um, no, it's, it's been a great transition. And, I mean, now the ballpark's totally changed. So many things you could have done, so many places you could have gone. You come back home to Sacramento. As we said, you're a Sac High grad. You come home. Mm -hmm. you got the Matt Wallback Baseball Academy, and I want to make sure we plug that a little bit later for people who want to get involved. But what made you decide to go into teaching? So, um, as I said, my mom's a teacher, so I've always had that, that spirit about me. And I'd had 25 years in professional baseball, married with three kids, and it was time for me to take a break from the, tr the road. And uh, the road was getting a little bit tough. And so I decided to come home and just do what I love, and that's be around baseball and teach baseball. And one private lesson turned into a group lesson, and then pretty soon I had some guys helping me, and then my own place, and now we've expanded. And, and so it's just, I'm just following my dream, really. So you and I were talking backstage, and I, I'm sure there's a lot of moms and dads out here that have kids in Little League. I, I have a 9-year-old, soon-to-be 10-year-old little boy who absolutely loves the sport. And at this point, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of the same parents, it's all about have fun, do your best. You know, They'll have the rest of their lives to be super competitive. But when you're talking to parents, what's some of the advice you give them as to how to keep their kids or, or help their kids fall in love with the sport? Well, we, we try to encourage our parents to, to praise their children on what they can control, just the things they control, like sure. hustling and being a good teammate, even hitting the front part of the base, things that sometimes go unnoticed. But the one thing about baseball that makes it difficult for kids sometimes is that their parents give them a lot of unsolicited advice. Right. And the reason being is that most men have played Little League at some point or another, so they feel they have some understanding of it. Um, but it's, it's hard for them to let it go and just focus on the kids' controllables. Instead, they try to tell them how to hit and how to throw, and then that affects the relationship between the kid and the parent. So we're, we're attempting to remove that and, and help families by, by putting together a program for their kids to, to really be respectful and play the game the right way. Parents cheer, coaches coach, players play type of thing. Exactly. We get that. And, you, and you know, you see... And I, and I feel like that's kind of a, a big deal these days with social media and, and, and you see all these documentaries on these kids going from day one. And, and listen, I, I hope I'd love to see my kid play Major League Baseball, but I also recognize that's almost certainly not going to happen. But I, I imagine a lot of parents and not to insult them, this is natural. A lot of parents want to kind of live vicariously through their kids. They do. And so, again, the thing that they can get the most out of baseball as a parent is to put their kids in a great program and compliment them and praise them on their effort and what they can't control because sooner or later they're not going to be playing, but they can take some of those life lessons out of baseball and apply that to their grown-up life. So when somebody comes in to your academy, a lot of kids obviously are going to be really intimidated. They've never done anything like that before. Mm -hmm. How do you try to bring them in and establish that relationship? We have a pretty simple process, actually. If you go to our website, walbeckbaseball.com, uh, we have an evaluation for, for parents to sign up their children. It's $15, and we run them through an evaluation. We measure how fast they throw, how fast they hit it, and then we'll contact them to find out if there's a position for them in our academy. It's a private academy, but we just ease them into it, and it's very structured and, and good order. So if somebody's interested in getting their kids involved, how do they do that? They, they go to our website, Walbeck Baseball, and uh, they create an account for themselves and for their child as their dependent, and they will go to enroll in an evaluation, and it'll be on a calendar, and they'll get a, an email reminder, and they'll show up at 525 on Fridays. So it's an hour long, 525 to 625 on Fridays. We're located in Rancho Cordova off Highway 50 and Sunrise. And thank you to Matt Walbeck. Matt, I appreciate your time. My pleasure, Dave. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Have fun.